I'm Tim Billier. I work at the uh, University of Pittsburgh. So I've had a long-standing interest in how trauma and other critical illnesses like sepsis lead to dysregulation of the immune response. Um, one, of, one of the unwanted consequences of severe trauma, and we see this in sepsis also, is uh, a dysfunctional immune system. So understanding how that immune system becomes activated and then evolves into a dysfunctional pattern um, has been our primary area of interest. I would say that being a surgeon investigator, or we can use what some call a oxymoron, surgeon scientist, is a fantastic career. You really get to live multiple lives simultaneously. Not only do you have the privilege of taking care of patients, but you have the opportunity to be involved in the creative process. It's a very fulfilling career. Yes, both get me very excited. Uh, of course, both can cause you a great deal of stress and uh, anxiety, as they should. These are both high-stakes issues, high-stake endeavors. Uh, the patients can give you an immediate sense of satisfaction or also uh, stress and anxiety, but mostly the, a satisfaction because things happen very quickly. Uh, research, which is also very exciting, um, it's more of a long-term or delayed gratification process. So you have to be patient. Uh, you have to be committed to the process. You have to be very, in both you have to be very critical of, of uh, yourself so that you always look for uh, the alternative explanation for what might be happening or why something happened. Well, you need to pursue your passions. Uh, as a department chair, I, I believe that most uh, people who go into surgery should really become good clinical surgeons as their priority. But a subset, a subset that have a clear interest in and a passion to also pursue research and also an aptitude for research uh, should seek opportunities to, re to um, um, have experiences in research uh, as a student, then as a resident, and then uh, ultimately in their career. But the mindset really has to be that you need to be trained in both. You'll often hear a resident or a student say, I'm going to go do some research. Uh, it's really a misnomer. What they need to do is have experiences that expose them to research, and then if they find that they have a passion for research, seek additional opportunities that allow them to become trained in research simultaneous to their training to become an outstanding surgeon. It's like your investments, you have to diversify. If you don't diversify, it'll be hard to maintain funding. And uh, you know, that's what uh, good mentorship should uh, uh, help people to understand. And uh, uh, Translation of observations into the clinic often will require strong, uh, re good relationships, productive relationships with industry, uh, different sources of competitive funding, not just the National Institutes of Health, Department of Defense, different societies uh, that are uh, affiliated with a disease area. These are all, uh, 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 part, and, and knowing how to obtain funding is a, is a critical skill set. Uh, many of us senior investigators view ourselves as fundraisers almost as much as uh, scientists. Uh, but the, uh, and it's never been different than this. You know, whether it was a benefactor giving a, a, a curious uh, investigator some uh, money centuries ago, or now as we have to, uh, you know, seek, seek uh, funding from a number of different sources so that we can pursue our ideas. There's a fallacy that mentorship is the key to the success. I've argued that it's menteeship. That's what the, how the mentee behaves because almost all of our environments are ripe with outstanding mentors and role models. Uh, but you need to be a good mentee to take advantage, advantage of the environments 